Hey guys, today we're gonna bleed the brakes on our car. In a previous video, you guys saw me install the big brake kit from Acubono off of 370 onto our 350Z. So today we now have to bleed the braking system. So it's very similar to other videos that you've seen. The only difference is we are dealing with fixed calipers. So we have a set of pistons on this side and this side. So you have to repeat the process a couple times, especially if your system is dry, just to make sure you got all the air out of the system. The Z33 or the 350Z and the G35 have an interesting system where Typically, like on our Chevy truck over there, we were able to bleed the system with just the engine off. Now, in this particular case, the way the ABS pump works, this is coming from Nissan, it is better to bleed the system with the engine idling to make sure everything's operating so that way we can actually push all the fluid out properly. For brake fluid, we are using DOT3. It is compiled DOT4. Uh, this vehicle is basically a touring vehicle. It sees a lot of street duty, doesn't see track. And we don't change the fluid that often. We change it every two years, but we're not changing like after a hard track session. For those of you that are looking into doing track use, you might want to look into DOT4, but make sure that you can uh, consult your owner's manual and make sure that it is compatible with the system. Every time we've topped off the reservoir, we are going to put the cap back on. Now, you may notice that I have it overfilled, and the reason that it's overfilled past the max line is because we are ejecting a lot of fluid out of it so that way we have more time to bleed as this thing keeps going down lower and lower. So Tanner's inside he's depressing it and now go ahead and crack our bleeder open. So you see we have a bunch of air. See those bubbles? We're trying to get rid of those. All right, now that we have the vehicle idling, we're gonna do 10 brake applications right now and we're gonna press and hold. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And we're depressing it all the way to the floor. So on the 10th one, we're gonna push and hold. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do do another 10 brake applications. So before he did that, I tightened it. And tell me when you've done 10. Okay, he's done 10, he's pushing holding. He's pushing and holding it, we're gonna crack open again. I'll show you over here. Okay, do another 10. Okay, we're gonna push it open up. So you see I have a bunch of air in the system. So we're gonna keep doing this it's just fluid and then we have to also check back at the reservoir to make sure that it's keeping topped up so during this process we had it full and we pushed a bunch of the fluid and air out so now the level's coming down so we have to keep monitoring this because if this becomes empty we're just going to introduce air again into the system so now that we're down the halfway point we're going to top it off with brake fluid so learn from my mistake here i had the box in here and i chipped the paint if you use sorry i used the open-ended part initially and it didn't grab the one i had to really t uh I had to really turn it and I chipped the paint. So if you use the box end, you can turn it and you won't damage your paint finish on your calipers or your powder coated finish. Powder coating is a lot more durable, these are painted. So you put the wrench on and then put on your tube. So you guys can see I have a bunch of air in the front. See it looks like foam. The aeration in the fluid. Cracking it. It's looking better. Give me five pumps again. Push and hold. We're gonna keep on going. Okay, give me five pumps again. See how we have less variation? Okay, give me another five. Let's 
getting more clear, getting more of that air out. So we just keep pumping it, and we just keep repeating the process. There we go, that's, all, that's way better now. We're gonna do it. one more time, give me five. There we go, that's way better. Okay, five more. There we go, that's way better. So just keep doing that till it looks like that. Another quick tip, when you're working in this area, have a paper towel or a rag or something. There are painted parts in here, I know you don't see it, but brake fluid is very corrosive and it can wreck the finishes. And you want to be, use a funnel as well, but that's what we were doing when we were topping it off. You can see we have it down there because we don't want to spill it. And we were very careful in this area because we do not want to get that brake fluid onto the finish. If you do, get a wet rag and wipe it right off right away. And then when you're done the job, maybe even whatever wax you use, repolish it again. Now in the video, you guys saw me crack it open, kind of wait a bit. Now the reason why I did that is I wanted you guys to actually see the bubbles in the line. But when we get to the second or third time, uh, we're cracking pretty quickly. It's like cracked open, closed right away. Like we're not we're not giving it a chance to build up air or anything. There's no point of keeping it open. So it's just crack open, close. Um, in the beginning of the video, I got you guys to start pushing it ten times, and you heard me say five. Towards the end, it was just three pushes because we were getting brake pedal immediately. So there's no point in pumping it that many times. Like you pump it ten times every single time if you want if you want a good leg workout. But we only did that initially because there's just so much air in the line. We wanted to attack as much of it as possible. Okay, now that you're all done, it's time to get the car on the ground. Obviously, do an inspection, make sure that you have no leaks. And after you get the car on the ground, done a couple of tests, I would go ahead and wash the car uh, because you've been dealing with a lot of contaminants and you guys are wearing gloves, so maybe you touched some parts on the car. So now's a good time to get as many of those, if not all those contaminants, off of the vehicle. So, uh, like you guys saw before, we were using a different wrench. I was using my gear wrench. I found the gear wrench actually grabbed onto the bleeder very well. But uh, just for example's sake, use the box end as much as you can. Most calipers should allow you to. You're going to grip the bleeder more. Especially if that bleeder's been on the vehicle for a very long time, you don't want to strip it. If it looks like it's corroded, it's been rounded off over time, just put new bleeders in. That's probably my biggest thing. Says if you strip them, you're, it's going to be a big pain in your butt. Other thing. When you guys are buying brake fluid, buy a couple bottles, buy big bottles. Especially with a setup like this, fixed calipers, we have bleeders on both sides, and we had a lot of air in the system, we had to go through this entire bottle. And I actually had some crappy brake fluid that I used in the bottle. Now, if I used this in the bottle, I would have ran out. We basically had to bleed the car about three times. So, uh, rear right, rear left, front right, front left. Did that three times. Um, and I was still getting a bunch of air on the second round. Third round, there was no air, and then the pedal really felt really good. So um, after you guys bleed it the first time, and you know you pump it a few times, you have brakes, but then after 10 seconds, it's falling to the floor. Don't worry, you're on the right track. Just keep on going, keep bleeding that thing. So today we showed you how to do this with the friend method, where you have someone working the brake pedal. Uh, you could also use a vacuum pump, you could use a power bleeder, we're using compressed air. Uh, you can bleed this by yourself by cracking it open and pushing the brake pedal and the sediment out. If I were to do it by myself, I'd probably do it that way, where I'd crack it open, push the sediment out, and then I would use the power bleeder, because you're pulling all the stuff out of the uh, reservoir to make it as clean as possible. I wouldn't push it with the power bleeder immediately from the caliper, because if there is sediment, you could be pushing it into the ABS pump and then you can wreck it. That is a possibility. Um, but the reason why I like the two-person method is I get feedback right away. So as I'm bleeding it, I am seeing if there's air, but I'm also getting feedback from the other person. Like, hey, is it feeling better? Well, if you're bleeding it by yourself, you won't know until you get in there. And it's just one of those things like me and my dad did. So it was like just to pass the time, it is kind of nice. But... Like I said, there's more than one way to do this, and we prefer to do it with the two-person method.